It's really funny. You know, I just got back from church, although I wasn't wearing a coat this time. <laughs> sometimes I wear a coat, sometimes I don't. Some churches I go to, I wear suits. Sometimes I wear t-shirts. You know, it doesn't really matter what you wear, does it? But one of the things I really like about church is, or what I like about my relationship with God and why I like to share in video churches, because I don't really need to talk about what's wrong with the church. I'd rather talk about what's right with the church. You see, there's a lot of people out there right now in the entire world who can tell you what's wrong with their church, someone else's church, with God's church, with Jesus' church, with the body of Christ, with pastors, with the elders, with deacons, with the music, with the worship leaders, with just about everything you can imagine. Why go? <laughs> Fine. Stay home. Watch football. I mean, come on. Get a grip, folks. What's up with that? You know, I mean, it's almost like they need to find something wrong because they're being told or maybe they're being shown what's right. I don't know. Now, me, I kind of like to talk about what's right with the church, you know. I kind of like the church that I go to. Now, I've been to other churches and there are things I like about all churches. Every church I've gone to, matter of fact, I've been to a lot of churches, I find things that are right with them. I remember this one community church I was part of before there was a Calvary in town and when the initial Calvary came to town I kind of went going to the quit going to the community church in order to help get the Calvary started and so uh, before there was a, a Calvary chapel in Klamath Falls there was a community church and it was the talk of the town at least in a positive nature for a while there were some bad things that happened to it but like any good ministry challenges come up but boy at the time that it was growing the people's community church not people's whatever from Jim Jones but just happened to have that name but it was a community church that cared that had discipleship that developed men and women of God I mean I can only look at everything that was programmed and everything that was being done and say wow it was awesome I learned a lot of good things from it and you know, I enjoyed that experience, though it ended in a way that was sad for the community church because the pastor fell from grace, you know, kind of went off on his tangent, probably back into ministry. Praise the Lord, you know, I hope so, I pray for him. But I enjoyed my time there as a learning experience. And that's what I think maybe people make the mistake when they think about church. You know, they think of, here's the church and here's the steeple, open the doors and see all the peoples, instead of, how about church is what you are, not where you go. You know, like you are the church because if God is in you and you are in him, there's two right there. And if God is in you, that means there's three in one and that means there's four people there. And if you have if any kind of part, you know, with your family, meaning that you have a house or you have a wife or you have some kids, I'd say you probably got a church in your home. You know, whoa, if you got God in it, what more do you need? I'm assuming you have a Bible. Hey, you don't need a pastor in order to have a church. It's nice to have one, but hey, you got one. So I'm always fascinated by when people are talking about what's wrong with the church, and I'm always finding out what's right with the church. You know, it's like I even ask them, well, let me ask you this, and I'll ask somebody, you know, that's saying something bad about their church or somebody else's. I'll say, so, what did you find that was right with it? Oh, well, they weren't true believers. It wasn't the true church. If it was the true church, they'd be like us. Oh, okay, so what do you like about your church? Well, we're the true church. We have the true gospel, we have the true this and the true that, and, you know, I always like the idea of, like, well, where's true north? See, I lived in Alaska. There's north, according to the compass, and then there's true north, according to the hemisphere. And then, if you really wanted to get spot on, according to the circumnavigational differentiation of the universe moving at a certain pace, as well as the computations of the Earth's rotation as it goes around the sun, and as it's rotating on its axis, and it tilts back and forth according to the seasons, 
you would have an interesting time trying to find true north because you'd have to work a mathematical equation within a certain parameter and you'd have to kind of like designate it within the realm of your fixation on where you are located or interlocuted upon that round sphere that you happen to be on, which is the globe, and then you'd have to use some kind of accurate designation, whether it be astral resignation, designation or whether it be you know, longitudinal longitudinal red designation, but is it true north when you're using the longitude and latitude, or is it just kind of like a rounded way of looking at it instead of a direct true way of looking at it? Spherically, you might not be on true north. So what would a true church be? What would a true person be? What is true? I didn't say true. Be careful. No, 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 no. I would do that to my wife. Whenever we were teasing each other, I enjoy my wife. God gave her to me, you know, and I like her. You know, she's a good person. More or less, I mean, the only good person there is is God, but she's a good heart. Well, okay, there's no good hearts. There's only hearts that God goes into, and then when God is in there, then it's good because it's called no man father, but your father in heaven, and there's nothing good except for him, and so we call him good and nothing else because everything else is kind of like converted or perverted or somehow in some way destroyed. So see how quickly that can become what's wrong rather than what's right? Oh, I may be scripturally accurate about what I'm about to say about good. Chalk that one up to my righteousness. Filthy rags, filthy rags, filthy rags. Perfect! Oh well. But putting it all in the wash, so to speak, we find that people that complain and whine really don't have the time to find out what's right. They're too busy finding out what's wrong. As a matter of fact, once they start seeing dark, they find more dark. You know, it's almost like they can see what's wrong and find more wrong. Before long, all they do is talk about what's wrong. I don't know. Maybe that helps somebody, somewhere, someplace in time. <laughs> yep, yep, I think it's about somebody. <laughs> but I'm not one of those people. You see, I didn't go to church to find out what's wrong. I don't go to a church in order to hear what's wrong. Matter of fact, I go to a church to find out what's right. And I go to a church to hear what's right. And you know, I like where I'm going, because I keep hearing about what's right. Well, that's unique. You mean a pastor that's not talking about other pastors? Ho oh, ho! What is he, a Christian or something? Could be. So you see, it isn't always necessary that you participate in that which you see that may be somebody going through a learning curve about discovering or uncovering or recovering from what they thought a church was or is or should be, but rather they're still learning to develop the graces that we literally have been given a church for. You know, we've been given a church for our benefit. Not to pick on, not to step on, not to kind of like, you know, do the itty bitty itty teeny when you know, polka dot bikini you're wearing and you're going to sin for that. But rather it's to find out you know, really, what it's all about. You know, you, me, God, we, and getting along together in doing that. Because you see, I think you're going to find out that whatever church you're in is a lot like whatever family you're in. Oh, you don't have a family? Ah, I think we see the problem. Did you know you've been brought into the family of God? Did you know you've been adopted as a child of God? Did you know you become an heir of all things? Did you know that you are part of a bigger family than the one that you think you're a part of because you have or don't have a father or a mother or do or don't or did or want or could or don't or should or even children or want to or didn't or may not or can have or can't or whatever? <laughs> hmm, gets a little confusing. Unless... You see the big picture that you've been adopted. So if you're adopted into a family, I think you want to find out what the Father knows best. Because, let me tell you something, the Father knows best. And call no man Father but your Father in Heaven, and Father knows best. What can I say? If you don't get it from Him, I think you ought to test and see if it's working for you because 
first you start with the family, like I said. You know, if you got God and you got a Bible and you got you and you know you got all this stuff working together, and you have no need that any man teach you, but the Spirit of God dwells in you, He leads you into all truth. You know, and blah blah blah. Well, hey, that's a church. Huh, sounds like that to me, because you know what? I could pay myself. <laughs> Ooh, mm, maybe. So, the bottom line is, since you have that kind of church, anyways, most of you, you know, and you know what I'm talking about, then. Maybe you already have a church because you've been saved. Ooh, never thought of it that way. That you are a member of a church because you're saved. And that the church you're physically going to is only an outward manifestation of a demonstration of a church you're already in. <gasps> Did he say what I think he said? Trust me, it's confusing. Because you see, there's the Church of Jesus. We could say the Church of Jesus Christ, the letter. Well, not that one. <laughs> no, thank you. Kind of got the wrong Jesus, so we kind of... We like to set that over there for a while. Mormons are kind of like doing their own Mormon thing. And, you know, if you like Mormons, go be a Mormon. Hey, God will lead you somewhere. <laughs> Good luck. But... No, 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 no. But the point being is that... In reality of there being one church. If there is only one true church, I think it's God's church. And that means that guess what? If it's God's church, you've been adopted into it. You are a child that's been accepted into God's church. Now, it's interesting that you know God got the wind blowing, I better go grab my plants, getting ready to blow over. Ha! The wind bloweth whither it will. You neither know where it's coming from nor where it's going. And that's the way it was with this plant. I didn't know where it was going. Matter of fact, it wasn't going to go very well because it was going to go, whoa! And it can't grow that way. And a lot of times, that's why people are moved around by God because they get blown over or blown out or blown away. Because their foundation and their structure and the thing that they're growing in wasn't solid enough to handle the winds and storms and changes of life that come upon them. So being brought into this family of God, we're able to enjoy the winds of change that come at us because it brings about with it those aspects of realizing that our foundation is better secured in the Word of God than it is in the Word of Man. Hmm. The Word of God, Word of Man. So, I'm already in a church, I'm already in a family, I already have God, I'm born again, so why do I need a church? Good question! Bunny, you should ask that! Because you need to grow up. I'm sorry. Nicholson doesn't cut it. Watching TV is just not a good thing. You gotta go to church. Hey, the letters to the seven churches were there for a reason. Because of the good works that you're supposed to do as a Christian. Mm, such a deal. I've got hands and feet. Well, I'd like to use them, but unfortunately my people think they're the hands and feet, so unfortunately they keep tugging on my hands and pulling at my feet. I'm letting them participate with me. They're not my hands and feet. I haven't cut them off yet. I don't cut off my feet and I don't cut off my hands. I'm God. Where'd that teaching come from? <laughs> hmm. The reality of being in the church of God, the big one, is that it has seven parts, you know, so to speak. Seven different types that people have gone through and, you know, explained as being the church age, the new age, the this age, the that age, the want and the die type and the providence and the experience and the dispensation and all these other things that they make up the explanation of what God is trying to say in Revelation to you about what, you know, if you fit the bill, you know, and it kind of fits your case scenario about what you are being uh, profiled as. Seven profiles, you fit one of them, do what they say, because that's what you are. Okay. So, hey, shoe fits, you got to wear it. I mean, come on, it's kind of hard to deny something like, you know, uh-oh, I'm being profiled. I got a big nose. <gasps> that's profiling. Oh no, God forbid. All people with big noses, raise your hand. Swear after me. I swear, so help me God, that I will not try to put my nose in 
somebody else's small business. I'm only going to put my nose in big business, <laughs> so to speak. So, if I have a nose, that protrudes as a proboscis or proboscis, probicus, however you say it, then my nose is leading me. And sometimes it leads me in the wrong direction. About as much as my tongue leads me in the wrong direction, sometimes when I just let it flap wherever it will, you know, and not pay attention to what it's doing. And as such, that means that I have to pay attention to where my nose goes because if I'm leading with my nose, I'm going to get popped right in the nose one of these days by running into a wall, a fist, a hand, something that, you know, maybe I should have like kind of kept my head back, you know, and take a longer look at that instead of leading with my nose by sticking it in somewhere where it shouldn't be. See how I worked that one together? Pretty slick, eh? <laughs> it's the Spirit of God, what can I say? But in church, people that don't like what they think they want will often say what they want and not enjoy what they got because they'll never get what it is they think they will like because they don't like where they're at now. Do you understand that? See, the old idea about grass is greener on the far side of the hill doesn't really work. It's more like, no, you're whining. Stop it. Knock it off. Be stupid. You know, it's dumb. Come on, get a grip. You know you're at some place because people are putting up with you. You know, your wife puts up with you, maybe, or maybe she got rid of you. Sorry. Maybe God puts up with you because he's given you grace, you know, and now he loves you, but he's not going to leave you the same condition you're in because, you know what, that talking bad about all the churches is just not going to cut it when it comes to heaven because God doesn't want you to. <laughs> so, being in a church already with God, that means that God can tell you what he wants as being part of his church because the only way to get out of God's church, your true church, is to get out of salvation. I don't think you want to do that. No, no, no. You don't want to do that. Because being in his will and doing what he says to do is pretty simple. All you got to do is enjoy it. Because you know, God's taking care of the rest. Just say, Lord, help, take care of me. You know, Teach me, lead me, guide me, provide for me. Do all the things that you said you do because I'm pretty much helpless. Because I have no clue what I've been doing, but I know one thing. It ain't working out. And that's kind of where you have to come to the conclusion when you go to a church and you begin to open up to people that are maybe not aware of who you are, what you are, how you are, the way you are. The only church that you can really get away with doing all that <laughs> it isn't the one you're going to. It's the one you're already in. Hey, you're in the true church, fool. Get a grip. Yeah. You know, you've been mouthing off about all these edifices, name brands, you know, all these different things that you're calling like, oh, bad, good, no, yes, up, down, sideways. Hey, if you're born again and you know Jesus, guess what? You're already in church. The one church. Now, it does have seven different parts, you know, so to speak. You know, it's kind of like an allegory here, so you got to take this with a metaphor and you kind of got to work into, you know, how it fits for you, for the Holy Spirit to work into you, you know, the teaching and the truth of the reality of how this is going to apply to your life. Or I could tell you, <laughs> you want me to? Oh, please, let me, let me, come on, can I, can I, can I, can I, can I, can I, I want to tell you what's wrong with you. <laughs> oh, I can't. Darn. Well, you see, because you're already in a church, you're already in the church Jesus says is his. He says, I'm going to make a bride. And that bride I'm going to take out of the church. And I'm going to make a beautiful bride. And I'm going to call her mine. And she's going to be the body of Christ. And I'm going to be the head of the church. You know, And I'm going to designate who I want, what I want, when I want. Because it's my bride. And we're going to enjoy each other together forever and ever. And you know, kind of hang out in New Jerusalem. So in order to get along with the program, you kind of first have to recognize that you got to drop this bad attitude and bitterness you got against some church somewhere from some building from some people that were there 
or up or down or sideways or however you went when you were trying to figure out who to vent on rather than who to think about and focus your energies on instead of trying to say what's wrong with the church. Because it's really not so much when you're telling God what's wrong with the church and you're pointing at you know the church. You got a problem. The church is you. Uh. And you're only pointing at yourself. You are the church. You are the problem, but you're also what's good about the church. You see, because when God gave his grace to us, and he sheds his grace upon us, and he manifested his love towards us in the demonstration of his atoning sacrifice by revealing how we could appropriate for us that loving kindness that God has that he wants to share with us. He kind of let us know that it's all done. You don't have to pick it up, figure out, and work out all the different problems there are. You got to work on, deal with you. Yeah, just you. That's all. As you do, you'll automatically influence everyone around you. You'll be a light. Light influences everything around it. It shines on everything. Can't help it. That's the way light is. Salt, man. Have you ever been out in the salt sea? <laughs> Have you ever been in this ocean? Something about the salt in the ocean just gets in everything. It gets in your car, it gets in your clothes, it gets in your hair, it gets in your eyes, it gets in your mouth, it gets in your ears. You just can't get rid of that stuff. It's like sand, only sand don't taste like salt. Salt, if you've ever been in the ocean, tastes like salt. You know the difference. And so, the reality of being already in the church, and that you are the church, is obvious by the fact that God is talking to you now and speaking with you personally and revealing to you things that he wants you to incorporate in your life so that you won't be about knocking the bride or the wife of Jesus. You talk about another man's wife? Hey, no, 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 no. You talk about my wife? No, 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 no. That's what God's trying to say to you. Drop it. Get over it. Get on with it. And get right with God. Because, you know, you can go to hundreds of churches and you can find thousands of churches that are right they are seriously they are right they're right in this way God sheds his grace on them if God has died for them what do you do really I mean if it's you know something that you just don't want to do you know like they're doing something that you think is a little strange don't go there go somewhere else you know, if it seems like something's not, you don't agree with it, quit going there. Go somewhere else. But shut up. You know, you don't have, quote unquote, the calling of God to be the prophet of God in order to tell God what's wrong with his pride. I don't think I'd want to be talking bad about God's pride. Yeah. Just doesn't sound right to me. It's like, Icky territory, I, you know, recommend, mm, you might want to think twice about doing that. You know, God might listen to you. And then again, he might listen to you. Then you might be in trouble. You talking, you talking trash about my wife? You talking trash about my girl? Huh? You talking trash? You talking to me? You telling me? Huh? It's my bride. It's my wife. Hey, I don't care. Maybe she is pregnant. I accept her. It's the work of God. God's doing the work. Maybe she's got sin in her life. It's the work of God. God accepts her. Maybe she's got, you know, a little few problems here, you know, that I gotta kinda like deal with. It's the work of God. God's in her life. Just like your life. You see. The same way that Mary was accepted because God defended her. It's the same way that you, every time that you point the finger or wag your tongue at someone else, God defends them. You may not realize it yet. You may not understand that completely. But that person is God's choice. That person is God's decision-making process in action for you to learn something from. You've been chosen in order to learn directly from that person. And they are part of the church in the body of Christ that has become the bride of Jesus. And if you were talking bad and trashing the bride, 
you're really just revealing the nature that you have inside rather than what God wants to remind you of who you are. Do you know who you are? Do you really? A virgin bride? Yeah, you. You're a virgin. You don't think so. But as far as God is concerned, Jesus never had intercourse. Really? No? No, 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 no. Oh well. That means Jesus is a virgin. Hey, guess what? So are you. Ha! As far as God's concerned. How'd you get away with that one? Huh? We've seen you in action. <laughs> yeah. But the point is, you are imputed with the righteousness of Jesus Christ. So because of his acceptance by God himself and yours isn't his righteousness and not yours his holiness and not yours his grace and not yours then God has chosen to accept him as perfect and not you the church whether you know it or not whether you'll accept it or not is perfect oh it may not be all parts of it that are taken into heaven but for what God intends for it to be for what God intends for it to do for what God has chosen his bride to become for what God has said to you today about what is good with the church and what is right the only thing I got to tell you is as far as God is concerned in his sight church is perfect. You might want to start arguing, but you don't want to argue with him. Because I know you're really arguing with yourself. Because as much as the church is perfect, the scary thought is, the way God's looking at you, so are you.